During a recent ceremony in Tokyo to mark the 98th anniversary of the Kanto Massacre, Japanese film director Yoji Yamada urged people not to forget the violent killing of Koreans due to discrimination and prejudice. Meanwhile, a group of right-wing protesters also gathered to deny the massacre. Books also denying it have enjoyed bestseller status over the last decade, and in 2017, Japan's cabinet office amended its website to delete acknowledgement of the massacre. That same year, Tokyo Governor Yuriko Koike insisted it was a matter of historical debate. Well, this month, a joint statement by around 200 academics and religious figures from both Korea and Japan called on the Japanese government to acknowledge responsibility for the massacre and to apologize, as well as calling for action from the South Korean government to investigate further. And this all echoes wider efforts to get Japan at official level to squarely face the abuses during its colonial rule over Korea. So what actually happened in 1923? On September 1st of that year, the Great Kanto earthquake caused vast damage throughout Tokyo, Yokohama and surrounding prefectures. An estimated 142,800 people died. This natural disaster was then followed by a very human tragedy. With anti-Korean sentiment already heightened by the Korean independence movement pushing back against Japanese rule, a false rumor spread that Koreans were using the earthquake to their advantage by pillaging and starting fires. Japanese soldiers, police and vigilantes hunted down Koreans with firearms, swords and spears. 6,000 or more ethnic Koreans and Japanese socialists are believed to have been killed during the three weeks following the earthquake. Eyewitness accounts are painful, including from Americans there at the time. For example, a Captain Hedstrom based in Yokohama claimed the official Japanese order was to kill as many Koreans as possible. He personally witnessed hundreds of Koreans burned alive on September 2nd, while missionary DJ Fisher wrote, where a Korean was found, he was at once killed. The Japanese government initially played down the scale of the violence, though did later admit many innocent Koreans suffered with the guilty. This idea of outsiders being guilty is not unique to the Kanto massacre, nor is it a distant problem of the past. Repeatedly, we have seen xenophobic rumors spread concerning looting or other threats carried out by foreigners following disasters, as recently as after a landslide in Hiroshima just last month. There's this theme of Koreans poisoning wells. The problem is many people give these rumors enough credit for them to take hold. A 2017 poll of Japanese people in three wards that suffered extensive damage after the powerful earthquake of 2011 showed over 80% of respondents largely or somewhat believe rumors of crime by foreigners in disaster areas. Such rumors and denials all pile pain upon the memory of one of the 20th century's atrocities, a memory that civic groups in Korea and Japan are trying to keep alive as we approach a full century since the Kanto Massacre.